Ah, uh, well, collectors, here we are again. Uh, this is um, unboxing number 40, I think, Ob. Is number that right? Number 40, yeah. I've been keeping track since you've been asking me lately. Well, you're supposed to be the person keeping uh, track of these things. I, <laughs> I'm just too busy to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. But anyhow, it's number 40, and um, uh, today is, um, well, let me light a cigar. Mm. Mm. Okay. Today is July 17th, and uh, that's not going to mean much to anybody, but it means something to me. You know why? It's my birthday. Hey, happy birthday, Pop. Yeah, thank you, Ob. And um, I was born in. Uh, during the war in 1943, so I guess you guys that know how to subtract can uh, pretty much figure out how old I am. So I'll I'll drink to that ripe old age. Mm. Wow, gotta make the first one strong. So it's pretty early too. It's only <laughs> it's only 12 o'clock, but uh, ah, what the heck. But uh, yeah, just pretend you're in London. Yeah. <laughs> and also, uh, Ob hit me with a birthday present this morning. And you're probably wondering what what the hell is that, huh? But you open it up, and boy, here you go. Here's a couple of the fattest Ashtons you ever <laughs> saw in your life. Now one's an Arturo. Uh, you know. One's an Arturo Fuente yeah. and the other one's an Ashton. Yeah, just what you needed. Just what I need, yeah. <laughs> these are um, these are cigars that um, it'll take you about an hour and a half to smoke one. So you need a little time. Best to get up on the front porch or something. Uh, uh, or if you're in the bar and have a drink, that's a good way to do it too. But a lot of people are ask me, uh, you know, what... What about your life? And uh, I'm not going to talk all about my life, but I'll just tell you a couple, couple things. That uh, when I was born in 1943, the war was going on, and my my pop um, was in the army, and he was stationed at Fort Belvoir. So I spent the first couple years of my life down in Virginia, outside of uh, of Washington. So um, I don't remember any of that, but uh, uh, Pop re remembered it well because I heard many stories. He managed to stay out of going overseas, and uh, he had a 41 Pontiac convertible at the time, and he used to take soldiers back and forth to Washington on the weekends to earn extra money. So he was very proud of that. But um, we uh, then we moved to a little town called Westmont, which is not too far from Moorestown, uh, where we were for, uh, uh, oh, several years until I was um, 12 years old. That's when we moved to, to Moorestown. But um, uh, I was in school just like everyone else, and uh, I was never much of a student, to be honest with you. I, I just was really uh, never... Um, interested in anything. I couldn't figure out where my place was in the world at that age. Uh, I couldn't figure it out at a lot older either, but uh, uh, the only thing that stands out in those years, in fifth grade I was a safety patrol officer. Remember those guys that used to wear wear those white belts and you, you're supposed to hold your hands up when the light turns red like the kids can't see that it's, that it's red, but uh, along with it you got um, you got a uh, free ticket to the Saturday matinee at the movies every week, and uh, that I liked a lot uh, because they they used to have a yo-yo contest before the movie, and uh, I was pretty good at the yo-yo. I could do the walk your dog and all the a lot of this stuff, but but of course there's always somebody much better. So I I never won the uh, the yo-yo contest, but. Uh, uh, those were the younger years of my life, and then I, uh, when we moved to Moorestown, I went to 
the junior high school here and uh, uh, non-distinguished myself, still had no idea where, where my place was in this world. I was, I was only uh, about five foot six at the time and uh, probably all of a hundred pounds. Although I should tell you once and when I was in kindergarten, um, they had something called a Tom Thumb wedding, which was a big wedding all made up of, uh, of the kids in the class. And guess who was the groom? Me, because I was the shortest kid in the whole class. So that's, yeah, I guess that was distinguishing. I don't know. But. So then from junior high school into, into high school, and uh, those are the days you start to look at girls and uh, uh, you start to become interested in cars, which I, I was interested in cars, but still not much in, um, uh, in schoolwork. And I, uh, to be honest, I was a lousy CD student all through high school. And, and I wanted to, I wanted to figure out something where I could uh, distinguish myself and uh, I remember going out for the football team and uh, that lasted about a week when the coach said look you're <laughs> this is silly you can't do anything you're too little the coach of the football team said well I know the coach of the swimming team and maybe you can get on that team and I thought well all right I don't uh, I know a little bit about swimming because I used to go to the seashores in the summer, but uh, I didn't know a lot about swimming. But I, I went there and uh, and uh, swam in the pool a little bit. And the coach said, "Nah, you're, you're not going to make it here." He said, "But how about would you like to be a springboard diver?" And I thought, "Oh, wow, that sounds like uh, something I'd like to do." So they taught me how to dive and uh, and I became a diver on the Morristown swim team and uh, I wasn't great um, but I was pretty good at it and uh, and I won a couple matches every once in a while and uh, that made me feel like at least I was somebody in this world that I was trying to figure out where to fit and uh, and in fact I uh, we had a state uh, championship and uh, and I won fourth in diving in the state championship. I was very proud of that, but uh, but it didn't get me any scholarship to college. So when I was done high school at that time, back in the uh, uh, early 60s, uh, there were a lot of war babies that wanted to go to college and there weren't very many colleges at that time. So, the only people that got into the colleges were those guys that had A's and B's and uh, uh, that certainly wasn't me with C's and D's uh, but there was a new school that opened uh, in Long Island called CW Post College and uh, they were looking for students especially students that would have to commute or not commute because it was all an all commuting school they wanted people for their dorms and all and if you could score a C average for two semesters in the, that summer uh, you could get into the school so pop sent me there under protest but I went and uh, I managed to get the C's no B's but I got the C's and I got accepted and I went through three and a half years of college there. I was able to do another summer, so I got out in three and a half years instead of four years, and uh, got my um, a bachelor's in business degree, and there I was. I was out of college in 1965 and still had no idea what I wanted to do. So I uh, thought, well, I better apply to a, an employment agency, and uh, then at the same time, uh, I was also uh, getting married. Uh, I only had two girlfriends in my whole life. Uh, both of them I met in high school, and both of them I married, not at the same time. 20 years for the first one, and Marie, the second one, were on 37 years, I think. So 
Um, so I had gotten married then right away and I was able to get a job at a great Philadelphia bank. It was an old stodgy place that catered to the main line people and I really enjoyed it there. It was in Broad and Chestnut Street in Philadelphia and you'd have these wealthy people, Roman Haas or so forth, would pull up in their limousines and I'd try to take care of everybody and um, I did very well there at the bank and uh, at that time they were just starting a branch banking system and I got involved with that and uh, uh, they actually at the ripe old age of uh, 27 um, I was the youngest officer they made me an officer in the bank the youngest officer they ever had so I was uh, and cheers to them so I was really kind of thrilled with that and um, so I stayed with the bank for a, a number of years and kept advancing and I and I liked it a lot and you guys know by now I had discovered daggers and I was collecting them uh, and uh, sort of dealing at shows a little bit at a time uh, this was in the in the 70s and um, and then all of a sudden, um, my two brothers and my cousin uh, decided they were going to join my father's business. And I thought, well, geez, if I don't join, then I might get left out. So I unfortunately left my bank job and, and went with uh, my father's HVAC company. And uh, in those days, they did tract housing because they were building developments all over this area. And that's what the business involved. And um, it, I was selling jobs and things like that. I never really liked it very much. And at the same time was starting to um, get involved with daggers. And uh, I suddenly realized that uh, people kept asking me questions at shows about daggers. And I was doing pretty well at it, advertising for things in the newspaper. and. Um, I suddenly thought, well, wow, I'm doing better with German daggers than I ever did with HVAC. And even though it's a family business, I think I found something that I really like. It took all those years. And of course, by this time, too, I had four children. So I had to worry about that, to say the least. So I quit my job and that's when I went into the dagger business in 1981 and I'll just end that little story here I think that's you heard enough and if you want to hear more about later years let me know and I'll, I'll tell you more and if you're bored stiff tell me to just shut the hell up and get on with the unboxing okay guys uh, I got my trusty Bob Burns box cutter here and we'll start out with our first box Ah, wow. Man, the drinks are strong. Let's see what we got here, guys. Uh, you know, all of this is as surprising to me as it is to you, so we'll, you never know what's going to be in here. Oh, well, I got a hunk of rubber here. That's always a good thing. And uh, here's a here's a letter. See what we got here. Something wrapped in paper here. Oh wow! Look at this. Mm. Wow. That's a uh, that's a set of um, leather uh, Tino leaders hangers. Yeah, uh, nice. Just looking at them, uh, this is the type you don't see very often. Um, these buckles are slightly larger than the standard Asman uh, buckles that we normally see, so they were made by another company. Uh, they also don't have the blackening that um, the Asman ones do, but they're original, and uh, the leather work is, um, is really, um, really terrific. Um, I've only had one set of these. It was a long, long time ago, but I remember the, uh, uh, the bigger buckles. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what, is there anything else in here? There's something more in paper. 
Oh, some kind of cup title. Ah, oh, this looks pretty good. This is this is an Africa Core cuff title. It's got some stitching left on it where it was on a uniform once, and that certainly looks like an original original piece. Seems, that seems to be it in that box, so that's pretty cool stuff. Mm, not bad. Not bad, yeah. Uh, We've see. seen worse. Yep. So that's one down. Let's see what we got next. Oh, here's my Puerto Rican friend here. Uh, <laughs> he keeps he keeps sending me stuff, guys. You know, nothing expensive really, but uh, although I don't know what's in the box this time, but the stuff he sent me in the past has all been, been pretty good. Uh, let's see how he did this time. Yep, Puerto Rico. Let's see what we have. I don't know how all this stuff gets to Puerto Rico, but uh, somehow at the... Oh. Uh, it says for Debbie. Uh, we can only guess what that is. I'm sure that's uh, maybe a box of chocolate or something. Thank you, Carlos, for Debbie. Today's a Sunday, so she's not she's not here. Let's see what the, what could this be here. Our board here. For Ab, cameraman. <laughs> it's Ab, Carlos, not Ab. That's the Spanish version. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's how he would hear it sound. What the heck is this for you here, Ab? Hopefully it's money. Hopefully it's money. Oh, you never know. Well, it is money. It is money. <laughs> yeah, it is money. Um, some of that old stuff there that... Uh, Rice the, marks? Yeah, yeah, from the 20s. Oh, yeah, that's Vibram. Yeah. 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 Oh, Carlos is taking care of everybody here this time. Yes, sir. And you know, the great thing about these old German villas is they have watermarks on them, which the United States didn't do for... Yeah, that's true, yeah. Years and years later. Yeah. Well, it shows you that they're original, but they're still not worth anything. <laughs> they're that's the they're just good looking, that's all. Yeah, they. that's the stuff that was caught in the, uh, the terrible inflation of the 1920s. Sort of like we're having now. Uh, it'll only be a matter of time, the way things are going, before we have to get a wheelbarrow uh, to put all the money in to buy a loaf of bread. You know how you heard that from the 20s. Let's hope it's not like that in America. But, uh, uh, thanks for the bills, Carlos. Yeah, maybe they'll buy a loaf of bread if things <laughs> yeah. really get tough, yeah. And let's see what's, what's here. Carlos is good on uh, cardboard Wait, It says here. something on the other side of that box. It says, hat inside. Uh. I guess it's a hat. So well, don't cut the hat. No, I won't cut the hat, no. So it must be a hat, guys. Uh, let's see what we have here. Doesn't want to come loose too easily. Uh, Oh, I see. I think I see what this is. This looks like maybe a uh, an HJ yeah. side cap. Absolutely. Yeah, look at there, guys. See, that's an HJ side cap. And a nice one, too. I think I know somebody who might be interested in that. Do you? Yeah. Anything on the inside? Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. RZM tag and Let's so see. forth. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that looks like a good cap to me. I think a lot of these HJ kids wore these as flak helpers and things like that, didn't they, Ob? Yeah, it looks like it's mint too. No holes, nothing. No, yeah, that's, that's really great. nice. It's a nice uh, piece. Well, Carlos, it looks like you did a pretty good job here. Something for Debbie, something for Rob, and something for poor old Whitman, too. <laughs> so th <laughs> thank you very much, Carlos. You're, you're a good man. Yes, sir. Right from Puerto Rico. Don't ask me how this German stuff gets down to Puerto Rico, but uh, somehow it does. Yeah, Argentina too. <laughs> yeah, Argentina too. That I know how it got down there. All right. So we're moving along here. Let's see what's next here. Oh. Let's see how to get this baby open. It looks like the, the top here. Yeah, Bob, your cutters are working good here, buddy. Oh, that was a good job. Mm, time for a little <laughs> sip. Mm. Yep. And as usual, the Whitman cigar went out. I think my cigar goes out just to spite me for talking too much. You should have lit up that ash tin for the uh, video. Yeah, that would be so much we could have smoke timed all it. over you won't see this stuff. Those babies are very smoky. Yeah, we could have used it to time the video. Yeah. You're right. Let's see what the heck is here. Looks like a lot of free bubble paper from one. Oh, something here too. I think that's it. Let's see what we got here. Uh, this man had the foresight to use rubber bands. I like that. Keep the blade sharp on the Bob Burns cutter that way. And more rubber bands. We're getting there. Oh my. Uh, this is a beautiful thing. Uh, this is um, uh, like a shot glass um, that comes from the Berghoff with what we call the pointed A, AH monogram. Can the camera see that? Uh, uh, spin this? it just a hair for me. Spin it. Yeah, that's... Boy, that is... Uh, the, yeah. These are uh, these are very dear, and uh, they came with a, um, a large carafe that had the same AH monogram on it. I remember selling a carafe with a, a few of those identical glasses with it. Camera doesn't like that. <laughs> no, it's hard to. Yeah. That's a very good thing, though, guys. Um, uh, they were only used at the Berghof, so a great thing for you guys to collect this, the uh, AH uh, flatware and tableware and so forth. And let's see what else is in here. Oh, looks like a. Some kind of a fork here. Let's see what we got. Ah, oh, dynamite. Oh yeah, here we go. It's an AH formal pattern uh, large dinner fork. Can never get enough of those kind of things. See that with the the chain link pattern that runs around the handle. The Greek key. The Greek key, yeah, you're right, Ob. And the mono, the uh, eagle, political eagle with the AH monogram. And then on the back, it should have the, yep, you'll always see on the back the crescent and the um, uh, imperial crown, 800, uh, and an eagle. Uh, those were the uh, silver hallmarks, and uh, they were the ones that were used by Brookman the company that made these for um, Hitler's uh, Berghoff 
but that silver market's really exploded anymore. Oh, you we just can't, can't keep them in stock. Can't keep Nothing. anything yeah. in stock. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, don't call about this one because I, I'm thinking of a guy that it's already committed to, and uh, if I don't sell it to him, he'll come over here with a, uh, with an AH Mark hatchet. <laughs> so, uh, so that's some cool stuff, both from the Berghof, very historical things. You guys that collect daggers and so forth may not uh, may not appreciate that kind of stuff, but. Um, uh, tableware is starting to become very, very big and um, selling extremely well and prices are on the way up. It, the stuff is expensive, but I think uh, cheap from what it'll be in the future. Well, here we go, guys. We got another one, another box here. Let's see what we'll do with this. Uh, looks like a four-way cut here all the way around. Right. <laughs> How many times can you cut it? I want to try it cutting it at the front and just open the back flap here. Let's see if this works. Oh, looks like we got the bottom part of it here. Flip it over and just let it lay. Yeah. Put the flap down. And, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yep, that's the answer. Let's see what we got here. Boy, this stuff is, you see an awful lot of this in there. Yeah. This great big box and uh, we got an iron cross in there. Yeah. Oh. No, it's good. Oh. Uh, there you go. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, well, here we go, guys. Except, I noticed something missing. The <laughs> scabbard's in backwards, of course, and the hangers oh, yeah. are on twisted. And it's denazified uh, and, uh, and a little tiny little crack there. And it's also missing uh, the swastika. Oh, did you <laughs> notice that? Oh, I never noticed yeah, that. That's. Uh, Do you think that hurts the value any? Well, I hope the blade's nice. Let's put it that way. Well, I don't know it. Well, no, the yeah. tip is broken off of the blade. Too. Oh, boy, this thing's got everything going for it. Yeah. It's a real surrender piece, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's one of those uh, it's, it's, AES, Arthur Everett's mark pieces, too, which are kind of rare. I, li I like uh, it because it's historical. It's like denazified it, they broke the tip off of it. It's real, very historical. You know, it's, you're probably right, Ob. That tip piece of was history. probably That's a piece of history. You know? It's a piece of history, cheap. Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the hangers to go with yeah. it. I ought to just fix but, uh, them. Uh, they're they're on they're on here backwards. It really is what it is, and uh, it's you know. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Somebody uh, might be interested in that. Yeah, rather than just. Sell it for parts, maybe just the whole thing is a uh, maybe it. Oh, even the spring's broken in the uh, in the snap clip here. That's where they ripped it off, the guy. Yeah, they broke the tip and yeah. Well, you know, this is stuff. This comes directly from a family, and um, that's what uh, that's what you get sometimes. Sure. Uh, it was a war, and uh, let's face it, the. Uh, uh, the Germans were certainly not loved at the end of the war, uh, nor what they represented, and that's why you you see this kind of stuff because our our uh, uh, forces were, of course, trained to uh, to hate the enemy, and uh, that's what happened. So, and who would ever uh, think it would be a collectible some seven? Yeah, years well, later, that that's yeah. it. And and actually, you know, you're probably right, Ob. This should be just left the way yeah, it is the and, it and is. sold as a uh, um, surrendered, surrendered, denazified piece. Yep. Yeah. 
that's kind of cool, actually. Sure. You know, it, it is an A and A E and S that Arthur Everett's. That that's a um, a fairly scarce maker. Yeah, for Luftwaffe's, absolutely. Yeah. For anything, really. So, um, I I kind of. I kind of like that. It's, I mean, got, it's it, no big deal. It's got, I know it's that. It's got cachet, as they say. <laughs> it's all right, though, isn't it, Ob? Yeah, it's fine. What the hell? It is what it is. Mm, that drink's okay, too. Mm. <laughs> oh, let's see what else we got here. My cigar got discouraged with me again and went out. Stop talking, Whitman, and do some more smoking is what that thing is saying, but... All right. Mm -hmm. Now, I have no idea what's in this baby either here. It's one of those long priority mailboxes. I'm going to cut that with my cigar cutter. That'll work. Too many Imperials, Whitman. I told you that first drink is usually pretty strong and uh, it's getting a little low, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'm going to refill that baby. I'm not stammering enough yet. Oh, oh looks like I might have a dagger here. And, uh, oh, we might have two of them. Anything else in here? Yeah, there's some more stuff in here. Oh, looks like an armband. We got a letter, I think. Yeah. Well, let's see what we got here, guys. Looks like a halfway interesting assortment. Well, here we go. We got a a, a decent armband. It looks like. In fact, more than decent. It's a very, very fine um, early uh, party piece with a uh, separately sewn uh, Bevo weave um, swaz and field. Um, maybe look and see if there's anything inside. No, nothing inside. But too but that's early for that. Too early for that. Yeah, you're right, Ob. And then uh, one of the oh, yeah. the Deutscher Volkssturm Wehrmacht. You guys know these were the armbands that were issued to the young boys and old men uh, for the Battle of Berlin against the Russians. Very popular so, armband. It seen, is a popular one in a while. Yeah, still, yeah, usually yeah. They're, we're loaded with them, but yeah. uh, and they do sell very well. Everybody mm -hmm. should have one of them in their collection because uh, it's the last, the last effort during the war. You know. Uh, uh, the Fuhrer was calling up all the panzer troops that he thought were just sitting outside uh, <laughs> Berlin ready to uh, uh, knock out the Russians and uh, of course that was not the case and uh, we all know what uh, happened to uh, Hitler after that. So let's see what else is in this interesting box here. Oh, well, we always need these. There we go. There we go. It's. Um, it's an HJ knife, the scabbard's in choice condition with uh, uh, the leather's really good too. Uh, it looks like there's a little hit yeah, to the hit. enamel there, yeah. that's kind of a shame. But then again, it is what it is. Uh, let's see how the blade looks on it. You know, when you open these, you got to be very careful because you can break the leather. You got to get under the snap. Yeah. Don't pull the leather. Yeah, it's not, that's the worst feeling you ever want to have when you break one oh, of those snaps. Oh, when you bring. Oh, well, it's got a nice blade on it. Motto. Yeah. Motto. Yeah. See that? Somebody will like that, even though there's a chip in the enamel. That is Who's a, the maker? Uh, Take a guess. Uh, oh, you can never guess on HJ knives. How about the, the devil? Same. I'm gonna pick the devil one. The devil. What's that guy's no, name? No, no devil. Hartkopf? Yeah, Hartkopf. Hartkopf is it? No, this is a, a Justinus Werk. Mm. Uh, it's also missing the um, blade buffer, too, but... Um, they put their wire really high up on the blade. Yeah. But that's a nice, um, nice, nice piece. Uh, it's a, it's a it's a mid range piece with a rare maker, yeah. you know. It's a good thing. And and the the motto is really still jumps out at you. So uh, I like that. Nothing wrong with that, guys. 
Well, there is the enamel. Okay. <laughs> but other than that, there's nothing. I am always saying stuff I should never say. Shut up, whipping. Good piece, though. That's a good piece, yeah. Oh, here we go. You can never have too many of these. You know, it's a common dagger, but it's so well made and heavy and substantial and that medieval look. A nice first model uh, early Luftwaffe. So all the guys at Luftwaffe wore these daggers at one time. Then were reissued the second model, correct? So that's why. Well, these were only for officers. Only for officers. And then in 1937, the officer model came out, the second model, and then these were issued to NCOs after that. Uh, but the ones that are nickel silver like this are early ones and they were only worn by officers. Uh, this piece has really nice um, mounts on it. Um, it's the, the pommel's quite worn, but it's still it's all there. Um, see on the other side, yeah. And uh, the leather to the grip is, uh, is sensational, really. And uh, so is the um, scabbard leather. It's really, really uh, in perfect condition and a nice shape. nickel chain. And let's see what the, yeah, the blade is, uh, looks really good, like they usually are, because they were, they were quality nickel plated. Um, who the heck, may, oh, this is one of those David Malsh ones oh, where the, yeah. uh, the etching is real light. This company didn't want to spend any money on acid, I think, they must have, and not the acid you're thinking of. <laughs> uh, but it does have a Waffen amp on it, and the logo is still still visible. Yeah. But uh, that's okay, uh, Ob. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. All right, that's good. We'll take those. Nothing wrong with that stuff, except for the enamel. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. Good stuff. Okay, guys, uh, I got a new drink. Ooh, wow, and a new cigar. Mm hmm And a new box. That's kind of feels like something stuffed in here that's. I got a tunic stuffed in there or something. Or, I don't know what's in here. It's soft though. Just don't cut it. No, no, I won't cut it now. Uh, thank you, Bob. This is a great cutter. Uh, let's see. Well, this, uh, Kind of looks like one of the dreaded uh, flags that we can't really show you. Yep, absolutely. The uh, of course we want to we want to deny history here. Uh, Just cut it, pop. Yeah, I guess you're right, Ob. Oh, wait a minute here. Well, trash bags are pretty valuable anymore. <laughs> yeah, you can't get them. I'm getting somewhere with this thing. Yeah, there we go. I wanted to save it because I'll reuse it for a trash bag, you know. Don't want to waste anything around here. Oh, yeah, this is one of the... It's a Kriegs flag, but uh, see if you can get to the hoist and just see the size of it. Yeah, this looks like a real nice... Uh, Kriegs flag. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this is, uh, oh, there's two of them. Wow, a smaller one. You can just get the idea of it. I can't really show it to you, but you know what they look like. That's a state service flag, I believe. State service, is it? Yeah, with that. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. These will have the eagle in the canton and right. the lined uh, swaths. And uh, what's it say on the hoist there? Let's take a look at that. Yeah, you're right. Dienst flag, 100 by 170. That's not too big. So that's a uh, Reichsdienst flag. Yeah, that's yeah. a state service flag. State service flag. 
Ob, you're always right. Oh, we got anything? Else? Oh, one more box here. Boy, this one's heavy. Must have something, uh, some arm armament in it. Cheers. Hmm. Wow. Have to have another sip to to meet this box on head first. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's good stuff. Well, it's not good stuff, but it tastes good. Let's see what we got here. Just my Imperial. You know, you guys know what I drink. Cheap booze and cheap cigars. Except Bob here gave me some good cigars. <laughs> I'll have to really nurture them. I, I'm not used to really good cigars. Looks like a pretty simple thing to cut open here, guys. But I'll screw it up, I guess. But let's see. With any luck, the box will come right out of here. Oh, there you go. Oh, some popcorn for you. Oh, yeah, some popcorn. Oh, I couldn't go through a whole video about complaining <laughs> about popcorn. But at least it's, it looks reasonable, though. And everything seems to be in uh, bags here. That's good. Let's see. So, a couple yeah. of baggers there. Yeah, hey, you would think so. Oh, here's one. One, uh, one sock. One sock. <laughs> that must looks, be the fireman bayonet. It looks pretty well <laughs> worn. Shall we look at the sock first? Yeah, let's do the sock first. All right. Uh, let's see what we got in this sock. Oh, looks like a naval dagger. Oh, it's a, wow. Oh, this is, this is pretty nice. Um, yeah, collectors, here's what we got here. A, uh, that's uh, a pommel, that pommel's a... That's a changeover, changeover pommel. pommel yeah. See, this is an imperial piece, so in 1937, this guy was still in the Navy, so he had his... Uh, Imperial crown pommel taken off and uh, the changeover pommel put on and uh, I think we got a, a gri an ivory grip here we certainly do and um, nice cross guard look at the little lines in it and all that's that's pretty neat and look at the beautiful yeah, scabbard, beautiful scabbard. Wow. that's a hand chased uh, scabbard um, these little see all the lines and in, in the scale looking stuff um, that mates up with the lines in the cross yeah. guard. I think that's why they put them in there to kind of blend it in. Don't you think so, Ob? Yeah, I think so. That's yeah. really, really nice. Beautiful. Wow, beautiful. No dents in it. It's really a um, very, very impressive. Yeah, what's the uh, chances of it being Damascus? Uh, probably pretty good, looking at the outside of it. Yeah. You want to make a bet on it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll bet you a buck. A buck. Well, you know what? I think it's going to be Damascus too, though. But I'll bet you a buck it isn't. Okay. Just for the hell of it. Up, yep, yep, Rob. My buck. <laughs> Rob went up my buck. Well, wait a minute. No, yep. no. Uh, it's uh, etched Damascus. Ah, uh, well, you only 50, fifty cents. Fifty cents. <laughs> 50 cents. <laughs> yeah, I know these daggers. I've seen them before. These are original. The R on it with Reisman, uh, and it's got a U-boat gold U-boat in the uh, design here. That's artificial, huh? That's artificial, yeah. yeah. Yep. Can you tilt it a little towards me? Yeah. What is that, a sub? It looks like a submarine. Yeah. I believe there are submarines on these yeah. Reisman pieces. I've had a couple of these in the past and they are absolutely original. These Navy daggers are the most difficult to photograph because of the blood fullers. Yeah. That's, yeah. I'm sure of that, yeah. Yeah, the, this is a this is a known. Um, apparently, Reisman was was maybe a um, a retail store, uh, but these are a known pattern, and uh, like I say, I've seen several in the past. I don't know whether I have one in my naval book or not. I'll have to look. But uh, this is one uh, really, nice piece. really yeah. uh, beautiful, beautiful right. dagger. Very nice piece. 
yeah that that uh, that is really uh, that is a beautiful thing all in an old sock guys well whatever works I guess well that's worth a drink here's to you mr. Reisman thank you for making those pieces so we can enjoy them a hundred years later mm. it's more than that at this point <clears throat> yeah yeah it is more than that well let's see what's in I don't know, just looking at that, and if that was in a sock, the rest of this stuff has to be, uh, oh, I need a, hmm, didn't go out. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, drinking, nice cigar smoking, and looking at choice daggers. Is there really anything else that could be better in life, guys? On your birthday, too. Oh, on my birthday. <laughs> I remember I was telling you how when I was young, I, I I just never could find anything that I liked or what I wanted to do. And uh, failure after failure after failure. And finally, I mean, this is sometimes you guys, you know, if you're on the uh, expressway every day riding to some awful job and all. Um, I feel sorry for you if you could somehow think of something that you really like that you could do for a living it makes such a difference in your life well they like they say if you love what you do it's not really work it's yeah. not really working yeah, yeah. Um, Rob and I we work seven days a week but we're not really working because it's fun feels more like eight <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe it isn't so much fun for Rob but it's fun for me no I enjoy it I can't, I can't do anything else at this point. Well, Ob's hit on something that he likes. Rob used to be in roofing. How'd you like to carry that 150-pound well, pack of shingles up to the roof? <laughs> uh, this is better than that, isn't it, Ob? No, you got that right. Yeah. So let's see what we got here. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is a... I haven't seen one of those in a while. Ah, this is a, a hell of a box here. This is... Well, guys, uh, and this is real, too, for once, we're looking at a, um, this is going to be a Bergsmuller, I would think, because uh, the Bergsmuller fittings, uh, these are uh, nickel-plated guards, and uh, is that aluminum, Bob? Looks like it, it yeah, is to me. So. Yeah. And it's got the proper hanger on it with the, uh, the DRGM uh, cast into the reverse. And the scabbard paint is still good. It's original. Yeah, that's a, this is, um, you know, for chained NPEAs, this is a, a very fine, uh, very fine piece. Uh, let's see what the... Um, we even had a chained NPEA. And no, a long remember. time now. Oh, the blade's okay. With the... Uh, the NPEA motto, which means be more than you appear to be. So if you're a short guy like me, uh, sometimes you don't appear to be much, but you can be more, again, if you find something that you really like. And uh, yep, it's a, uh, it's a Carl Bergsmuller. You got it again, Dad. Well, I, it has, there's only one maker. Tell the little uh, towards with, me, please. There you go. Yeah. Only one maker with fittings like this, so if you're going to be in this business, you, you already know what they're going to look like. Wow. <laughs> so, how about that, guys? Like Not so guy. bad, huh? There's a couple of really fine pieces. Wow. Well, we got one more, one more to open. I wonder what this is going to be. I hope it's something good. Mm -hmm. We shall see. I need a sip for courage. Mm. <clears throat> we shall see. You ready, guys? 
Ho. Ho. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Who? <laughs> but it's real too. Wow. Well, what is it? <laughs> I'm going to show you. All right, guys, hold your breath. Wow. Yeah. Look what we got here, fellas. This, of course, is a um, early SS honor dagger. It's not a chain leader. It's one of the early. You sure it's SS? Um, SA, I mean. Yeah. Did I say SS? SS. No. Sorry, guys. No. Uh, it's an SA. If it were an SS, it would be worth the... <laughs> three times what this is worth, although this is still worth a good buck. Um, look at the beautiful oak leaf and acorn cross guards. Absolutely beautiful. And the silvered eagle and the, the nice uh, icorn grip. Uh, and then you have the, uh, uh, the pattern lines that go around the uh, outlines of the fittings. And uh, the leather covered scabbard uh, for once, this scabbard leather is original. Yeah, that's not been redone. Absolutely. You agree, Ob? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's that's absolutely. real, and it's very rare to see one of these with real leather. It's it's still original shape, leather, and I, but I like the dings and everything. It shows it's been yeah. on there, you know. I mean, that's uh, that's remarkable. That's it's really in uh, quite beautiful condition, and this is the proper hanger that we see on the. Icorn honor daggers with the snout nose clip. That's the hanger that the uh, so this hanger's original to it too. Well, is it going to be a damask blade? You think, Ob? Yeah, I bet the house on that one. What? How many? What is it usually? It's usually Damascus, correct? Ninety percent of yeah, the time. Sometimes but, uh, it isn't. Sometimes it isn't, but uh, I'm betting on the Damascus again. Double or nothing on the fifty cents. <laughs> Oh, I, I got to go with you on that. I can't. I can't lose fifty cents. I, I, if this isn't Damascus, I'll be very surprised. Yeah, the ball was good and got the original screws in it. Well, here we go, guys. You ready for this? Oh. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, yeah. it's a Damascus sure. blade. Yeah. yeah, with nice gilt yeah. too. Yeah, the gilt is nice. It's got a lot of grease on it, but it, the blade looks like it's. Uh, it's in super condition. This is all grease yeah, here that you see. Yeah, it's all grease, yeah. Yeah. I hate that. Beautiful damask blade. Can you get that, Ob? Yeah, go ahead, flip it. And, uh, yeah, there's that early uh, Carl Icorn trademark, too. See, the blade is all full of grease. The blade yeah. looks like it's in, in mint condition underneath all that old grease. No, yeah, it'll clean up just fine. You know, guys figure they put grease on it and that'll protect it. Um, and it, and it does, but it uh, it sure makes it look <laughs> lousy. But uh, but this is I can see it's got a beautiful um, maiden hair. I don't recommend it. I, I don't really understand why they do that because I don't think it's needed. Well, it, it's needed if it's in some wet it cellar yeah, or something like that. Yeah. But um, for the most part, uh, this old grease um, uh, it's really not necessary if you have your. Uh, pieces in a um, controlled atmosphere, uh, they're going to be fine. So this is um, this is a killer. I mean, it's. Uh, I don't remember the last time I've had a SA honor dagger. It's been many years. Um, a lot of these were converted to um, chain leaders. The people that had the early honor dagger when the chain leader came out in 1938 uh, they sent them back to Icorn and Icorn put the uh, chain on them so it's rather rare to see uh, an original uh, straight honor dagger and uh, same uh, trademark throughout the whole time yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah the uh, the early Icorn mark so this is um, obviously something uh, very very special and uh, <laughs> geez I, I don't know it uh, is that your birthday present <laughs> yeah, it's, my, it's 
that's what I'm thinking. It's uh, <laughs> it's my birthday today, July 17th. Um, what a fitting, uh, not, it's not a present, but because it'll be for sale, but what a, um, what a beautiful thing to, uh, to come in here. Uh, so there we go, uh, collectors. Oh, that's our, um, that's a good box. That was a very, very good box. Uh, I can't think of, uh, anything that I would rather see than that last piece. Well, uh, I don't know, sometimes the, the best things just work out at the end. It's, you think, oh yeah, that's some coincidence. Well, it was. We really didn't know what was going to be in here. Um, so, anyhow, uh, that's our unboxing number 40, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Happy birthday, Pop. <clears throat> Thank you, Bob. And uh, we'll see you next time if I can help you with anything and and keep writing in and um, uh, I love the comments that you guys make under the videos I, I appreciate it uh, most everybody seems to enjoy them uh, once in a while somebody calls me a, a lion old cheat or <laughs> a, um, a, well all the all the names that uh, uh, that somehow um, I don't know whether they're just jealous or whatever it is but but we do, we're, we do our best here, and we try to do a good job, and uh, so far, so good. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.